Hello folks, welcome back to our Pokemon Players Cup video game regional qualifiers. We are still in the second week making our way through and uh, the past couple battles have been pretty awesome showings between some of the best players in the world. Players like Wolf Glick, uh, James Beck, Paul Ruiz, absolutely phenomenal players. We saw super great play. And uh, what we have now is another caster showdown. So uh, in the previous week, we had Adam and Lou face off in their own little caster battle. But this time we have Aaron and Rosemary, this in a gym leader format, essentially a monotype format. Uh, both of our phenomenal casters chose a type to go into this. All of their Pokemon had to be of that type. Aaron, Cybertron, Zhang chose water as his type using Pokemon like Politoed, Kingdra, strong rain, core to boost the water type attacks. And uh, Rosemary Necra Gaming Kelly, I think it might just be, we can just say Necra, but she chose Fairy type using Pokemon like Sylveon, Grimmsnarl, Pokemon that have been absolutely been powerhouses previously, both in terms of damage output and support. So Fairy type, generally known as one of the stronger, if not the strongest types, right alongside water. So we're going to see just how this battle shakes out between our casters. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Ah. All right, so here we see Rosemary and Aaron. Rosemary starts off with Togekiss and Alcremi. So Alcremi is one of the Pokemon that has a Gigantamax form. Uh, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't entirely know what it does, but Togekiss is also certainly a threat. Great redirection uh, support, but it can also be a very strong damaging Pokemon on its own. It can even have moves like Heat Wave, although it's not, that's not super useful here. Uh, here we see on Aaron's side, Lapras and Primarina, both very, very, offensively dangerous Pokemon, uh, particularly Lapras with its Gigantamax, and um, it can set up, they, these Pokemon are both also very, very bulky defensively. Uh, if Aaron Dynamaxes, the, or Gigantamaxes this Lapras and uses G-Max Resonance, it's going to be hard to take down either of these Pokemon. Uh, now Rosemary, let's see here, Rosemary is in fact Gigantamaxing that Alcremi, and as we said before, we see that Colossal Cake Pokemon, and li I listen, I'm a little hungry right now, and that's just making me even hungrier. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like a helping hand or a follow me out of Togekiss just to really make sure that the Alcremia is either putting out enough damage to KO one of Eren's Pokemon or to make sure it survives one of these attacks or at least takes minimal amounts of damage. Uh, as we see here, Eren is Dynamaxing, Gigantamaxing the Lapras. One interesting thing to note is Alcremia is moving before Lapras. Could be a speed tie, but I doubt that. Uh, and so Rosemary will be getting an attack off here. Max Overgrowth comes out. Phenomenal move to have against a mono water team, but this Primarina takes it like a champ. Alcremi, a special attacking Pokemon. Primarina, very specially bulky, and with that damage, it looks like it's likely something like an Assault Vest. Uh, Lapras could have something like a Life Orb. Tokus here using Yawn. This will take Lapras out of the game after a couple of turns. Primarina, units, Primarina uses Surf. Lapras is water absorbed now. Uh, it would heal it up if it had taken any damage but instead the max overgrowth went into the pre marina here we see the g max resonance coming out taking out the tokus as we said lapras is a phenomenally strong pokemon in this gigantamax form and now aurora veil is set up it's going to be limiting the damage that rosemary can put out now and uh seeing as how both of aaron's pokemon are very bulky on their own and rosemary even set up grassy terrain here for aaron uh making that pre marina even harder to kill We'll see what Rosemary has in the back of this. Alcremi's gonna have to do a lot of work. Uh, potentially something like Grim Snarl. It might have something, it might have a move like Brick Break, which could be huge. Uh, Sylveon here, though, coming out another specially offensive threat. This pre marine that this pre marine lines up very, very well against. Max Lightning here. Great move out of Aaron. Going into the Sylveon. This time we'll set up electric terrain, and Lapras won't be going to sleep after that, which is a important thing to keep in mind and even if the, this Alcremi uses max overgrowth again since Lapras is moving after it the electric terrain will get set up here we see helping hand coming out that's going to be necessary against this Aurora, Aurora Veil if Alcremi wants to be doing anything here max overgrowth comes out back to the Primarina slot it'll probably likely do the similar amount of damage this time it actually does even more that helping hand putting in so much work even through the screens surf once again not affecting the Lapras, thanks to the Water Absorb, doing a little bit of damage to both Alcremi and Sylveon here. Max Lightning coming out into the Sylveon, gonna do a lot of damage. Uh, well, does maybe a third, a decent chunk. The Sylveon, relatively bulky on its own. This will be a very defensive matchup. 
it looks like. And this electric current runs across the battlefield with electric terrain. This Lapras will not be going to a sleep, going to sleep anytime soon. And uh, this toge that Togekiss, well, it didn't die in vain. It took a hit for its big cake friend over there, but that yawn, not doing too much. However, it did stop Lapras from using something like a Max Geyser, which means rain didn't get set up. So Surf, uh, potential Hyper Voice out of uh, Primarina and now and future Max Geysers won't be doing too much. And here we see uh, Alkermi's signature G Max move come out here, healing up Sylveon. As we said, this is going to be a very defensive game. And as we see both players with lots of healing going on, that Surf finally healing into Lapras's Water Absorb. Alcremi nearly back at full. Sylveon taking another chunk of damage again, but Hyper Voice uh, likely Pixelate boosted, Pixie Plate boosted, uh, maybe Life Orb, but that Sylveon doing plenty of damage with a very, very powerful Fairy-typed Hyper Voice. Uh, here we see Max Geyser does come out into the Alcremi doing a decent, doing a little bit of damage, but this rain does get set up, which is relatively important. It will help Lapras in the future, and it'll also help uh, the rest of Aaron's Pokemon. Aaron does bring in Politoed now, uh, Politoed would have set up Rain on its own, but now Politoed gets to perform its supporting role with moves like Helping Hand, Scald, Icy Wind. Uh, it can even know, it can even uh, potentially know something like Ice Beam to try to do a little bit more damage. Uh, but normally we see it in a fairly supporting role. Uh, Lapras here, most of its moves, as and as we can see here, something like Freeze Dry isn't the most effective against these non-water, non-ground type Pokemon. Uh, but it looks like Aaron kind of went all in on this Lapras plan. Uh, Politoed using a Surf, very similar to what that Primarina did. This Lapras is gonna be super hard to take down, but that Sylveon looks like it hangs on by a thread. Alcremit using Giga Drain, gets a bit of damage onto the Politoed. Heals up a good chunk. We'll see if Sylveon moves before Lapras, which it does, it gets an attack off. Polito taking a good chunk of damage. Lapras surviving that well, though. And uh, Alcremi gets hit by the freeze dry. A little bit of damage coming out. But uh, as we saw, that Polito does move before Sylveon. We'll see if Sylveon does have something like Quick Attack. It is certainly an option. That Pixelate ability will also turn the normal Quick Attack into a Fairy type stab move and boost its power. So we could certainly see that. Just a little bit of damage coming out. Aaron switching out Lapras, uh, bringing in Gastrodon. Another, another just super bulky water type. Sylveon using Protect from Rosemary's side. Uh, this Gastron though, switching into an Alcremi with Giga Drain is a little dangerous, but Gastron Storm Drain now, raising its special attack. Aaron really taking advantage of these water moves, especially Surf, uh, which is a phenomenal move on its own, but when, it, when you're able to pair it with two Pokemon that with that have Water Absorb, that have a Storm Drain, they do, that puts in even more work. Uh, this Alcremi healing up a little bit. I don't know if it'll be able to survive another Surf, though. And uh, now this Gastrodon is certainly a threat. Uh, which, it is a special attacking Pokemon on its own. As we see Surf and Earth Power, they can do a good chunk of damage. And Gastrodon can certainly survive a long time with something like Recovery. Here we see the Quick Attack out of the Sylveon. And the Politoed survives at one! That is actually super huge, as it does trigger another Storm Drain, putting Gastrodon at plus two. And it likely takes out both of Rosemary's Pokemon here. Or at the very least, yeah, Alcremi is at a very, very low health total. Uh, but a Giga Drain into this Gastrodon is going to do a chunk of damage. Almost taking it down all the way to half health. Alcremi will be able to heal up a good amount. We'll see if this plus two Gastrodon can take it out with a Surf. There's a good chance it will. It is a it is now pretty much a single target move. However, Polito does also go down on Aaron's side. We'll see what Rosemary brought in the back, but it now has to face down both a Gastrodon and a Lapras, and the Gastrodon is at plus two health. The electric train disappears from the battlefield. We'll see if that has any impact on what is coming in next. And we see the Lapras does have light clay. Uh, so this Aurora Veil is gonna be sticking around for a little bit longer. Mimikyu comes in. Now, Mimikyu is a strong Pokemon. Uh, it can use moves like Sword Stance, to boost its attack stats while its uh, its disguise is still up, and uh, but unfortunately Rosemary has not Dynamaxed yet, or Rosemary has already Dynamaxed, and that's where Mimikyu can really shine after it's after it uses a move like Sword Stance. So we'll see likely one hit coming out from the Lapras here in the Mimikyu Thunder, gonna break the disguise. Mimikyu will stay at full health though, 
Now, we'll have to see what Mimikyu uses here. Uh, something like Shadow Sneak is a priority move and it'll get damage out. Uh, Rain does stop here. That's another important thing. Those water moves are going to be certainly weakened. Um, but something like Play Rough might be a little bit of a stronger move that Mimikyu will want to use. It has a better chance of KOing Aaron's Pokemon. But Mimikyu actually has a Wood Hammer. The tech coming in from Rosemary taking out the Gastron. That is going to have a lot of recoil, though. We'll see if it can survive something from this Lapras. It likely can now that... Since we see that Lapras is not does not have a attacking item and it is out of range, Surf is going to do a good chunk of damage. As we said, with a single target, Mimikyu does survive. Aurora Veil wears off. A Wood Hammer here just might be able to do it. It will certainly be close. This Lapras is likely very bulky. Still, Wood Hammer comes out. Mimikyu will get KO'd from the recoil if it doesn't take out the Lapras, and it does. Looks like it's at one hit point. This Mimikyu taking out on, on the two v one. Rosemary just barely able to pull that one through great first game there that was so so close the aurora veil and the rain wearing off at just the right time for for that mimikyu to come in clutch the disguise absolutely phenomenal there uh that surf rain boosted surf would have taken out the mimikyu and aurora veil and hitting into the aurora veil with the wood hammer likely would have kept that lapras alive smart targeting from rosemary taking out the gastrodon first saving the Lapras for when damage would have been maximized. And uh, throughout that game, we definitely saw we, it was very defensive up front. Aaron was kind of able to set up with Surf's with two Pokemon that really like to get hit by a Surf, by a water move. And that Gastron was certainly scary and Lapras setting up the Aurora Veil was big those first few turns. But as we saw, Mimikyu coming in at the end there, it is a force to be reckoned with, especially after something like a Swords Dance raising its attack stat. Uh, and now we do know that uh, that uh, Rosemary does have some good tech against Aaron's water type Pokemon Giga Drain on the Alcremi and Wood Hammer on the Mimikyu. Both that both put in a good amount of work keeping and we saw both players really were just trying to keep their Pokemon alive. Uh, but Rosemary just ended that game with more with a better damage output than what Aaron could match. So. Let's go into game two. Let's see what adjustments players make. We'll see if Rosemary wants to potentially try to match the screens with something like Grim Snarl, using Reflect, using Light Screen. Once again, it, with that Prankster ability, making sure it moves first so it can get set up. And really, from what we saw, all Rosemary Super has to worry about is special attackers. We do know that Rosemary has varied threats on her team. We saw special attackers with Sylveon, with Alcremi, but uh, a definitely a dangerous physical attacker in Mimikyu. And as we as we were saying before, Primarina takes special attacks super, super well. Not so much the physical ones. So a, a leading Mimikyu with a Swords Dance going into Dynamax, potentially with a Togekiss Follow Me for support, could be very big here. So with that being said, let's see if we can make it into... Whoop! Let's see if we can make it into that second game. And here we see Rosemary is in fact starting out leading that Grim Snarl. Like once again, can definitely set up screens of her own. Togekiss, we saw it does have Yawn. That kind of clues us into it might be a little bit more on the defensive side. Likely not a Pokemon that Rosemary is going to want to be Dynamaxing here, but it certainly can. Uh, now there's Politoed here. Uh, could you something Icy Wind, a dangerous, a very dangerous move here, slowing Rosemary's Pokemon down could be key. We kind of saw that the speed interaction in that last game was important, with Sylveon getting one last attack off before it died. And um, an Icy Wind, again, could be huge. We could see something like a helping hand if Lapras wants to go straight for the G-Max Resonance into Togekiss, uh, if Togekiss tries to protect or anything, or if Grimmsnarl gets that uh, light screen up, which it most certainly could. Uh, from Rosemary's side, Grimmsnarl, it looks like it looks like she is trying to set up some opposing screens. Uh, and really, all she has to worry about, at least from what she saw lights last game, is just the special attackers. And setting up that light screen is going to be pretty big here. Politoed uses Surf. Lapras is water absorbed, not really making sure it doesn't take any damage. No healing coming through here. Uh, this will be a little bit of chip on both of Rosemary's Pokemon. Grimmsnarl actually taking a fair amount. Dazzling Gleam coming out of the Togekiss doing a decent amount critical hit on lapras uh and thunder coming out now since polytoad is out the rain is up and that thunder is 100 accurate it's going to be 
bring the Togehiss down below half. Uh, as we see, Togekiss is not a healing berry. And likely something, it could even be Scopelands. We saw that crit come through, uh, but the chances of that are eh, since we did see that yawn. Again, it likely has something like yawn, follow me. And now as we see the Dazzling Gleam, that fourth move slot might be pretty important here. Helping Hand could be big. Uh, this Grimstone now, it can no longer use something like Fake Out. And uh, that's probably smart from Rosemary. If Aaron had, there's not, you don't really want to be f using Fake Out on a Politoed. Uh, it's not necessarily the most threatening Pokemon in terms of damage output, and getting up that screen is super important. You can't really fake out a Lapras. Uh, but now Grimstone has some options. Moves like Foul Play here, not the greatest. Once again, Aaron's team is very specially uh, offensive. But a Sucker Punch here could do a decent amount of damage, uh, and Grimstone even has some of its own signature moves here. Rosemary, as we said, opting not to Dynamax either of these Pokemon. Lapras's Water Absorb coming in here with the Politoed using Surf. This Politoed is relatively fast. Grimstarl goes down. This Rain Boost uh, is big, and this Critical Hit is even bigger. Uh, Aaron trading that Critical Hit from Rosemary. Togekiss using Dazzling Gleam, doing once again a good amount of damage. A Critical Hit on Politoed. This just might be a crit. Yeah, it looks like this is a Scope Lens Togekiss, uh, so we likely also have something like an Air Slash here. Uh, and this G-Max Resonance comes out doing a good shot and uh, it takes out the togekiss and the aurora Bell gets set up for eight turns so one thing to keep in mind here grimstarl since we saw that it had the screens it probably had an item like light clay to make sure that it lasted for eight turns what's really important for aaron here is that aaron's aurora Bell is going to last for one more turn than rosemary's light screen and uh, currently rosemary just lost both of her pokemon and now it is mimikyu plus sylveon aaron i think for sure is going to be a little more wary of what this Mimikyu is doing here. And this Politoed can get a Surf off. And it's going to be very fast. Uh, it will heal up the Lapras. Uh, Mimikyu might be faster than it. There is a decent chance of that. Sylveon, though, is not a threat that you can really overlook here. Politoed, we see that Surf coming out. It's going to heal up the Lapras. It's going to deal damage to both of Rosemary's Pokemon. It looks like no Protects out of Rosemary's side. And still no Dynamax. Likely wanting to set up the Swords Dance before Mimikyu goes into start... Goes into... Dynamax form to ma to start using um, Max Overgrowth. Mimikyu Swords Dance coming out here, but we know the attack is coming out from Lapras. Uh, that light screen from Grimstyle could come in super huge here. Hyper Voice coming out. Politoed survives at nine health. Lapras still looking nice and bulky. This is its last turn of Dynamax? Question mark. I don't think so. I think it still has two turns. And this Mimikyu, that light screen definitely saved it. But now it is in such a precarious spot, uh, as we saw. Politoed does move faster than it, and there's a chance that Mimikyu will not survive if it is Dynamaxed. And uh, Aaron doing a good job of targeting down the threats in this second game, making sure that this Mimikyu gets out of the way here. Rosemary Dynamaxing a Pokemon, I imagine it's going to be Mimikyu simply because it puts on so much offensive pressure. Uh, and here we see it is coming out. It's at low health. We'll see if it can take a hit from this Politoed. And... Uh, this Sylveon is going to have to come in clutch one way or another. Sylveon's quick attack, as we saw before, a phenomenal move here. Takes out the Politoed this time, no surviving on one hit point. It is too low for that one. Mimikyu faster than Lapras. Max Overgrowth coming out. It's going to do good damage, but those screens are up still. Lapras survives, and uh, this hit into Mimikyu, if it does target Mimikyu, is certainly going to be dangerous. Uh, but Sylveon is a strong Pokemon, and the Life Orb Recoil, putting it almost <laughs> for sure within range of just about any move, and Mimikyu goes down. So last time we saw, it was Mimikyu in a 2v1. Now it's Sylveon in a 3v1. Sylveon does have a powerful move in Hyper Voice, uh, and we saw it has Quick Attack to kind of clean up those last few KOs. But Aaron's screens are still up. Kingdra is coming out now. Kingdra is going to be very, very speedy in the rain. I, I, I doubt that it will be going down to a pixelated quick attack from Rosemary, especially with Aurora Veil up. And that's kind of the big story of this game so far. Is those screens, is that Aurora Veil? It didn't really help Rosemary too much to set up those that, that light screen. As we saw, her Pokemon still went down very, very easily to both of... Uh, to two Lapras really and here we see again almost I think every single Pokemon that Aaron has brought has Surf and Kingdra healing up Lapras is huge it's going to be dealing a good chunk to Sylveon 
Uh, Hyper Voice here could do a lot to Kingdra. I don't know if it will take out Lapras, though. I don't know if it'll take out either Pokemon with the screens up. And yeah, both Pokemon are still very, very healthy. Thunder coming out, a guaranteed hit. Sylvia not going to like to take this. It is down below half and paralyzed. That is going to be huge. Uh, now this Lapras is going to be moving before Sylveon, but the rain goes away. There's no Dynamax and there's no Politoed to bring the rain back. And now, of course, Kingdra can surf. It will heal Lapras up a good bit in this grassy terrain. Providing health is going to be big, but this Sylveon is in even more of a dangerous spot now that this light screen has worn off. Uh, if Sylveon has Protect, now would be the time to use it, try to wait out this last turn of screens. But Kingdra just using Surf again. Sylveon gonna have... Just going to opt to take it. Lapras healing up almost all the way to half health. Surf into the Sylveon, bring it down to about a quarter of its hit points. Freeze Dry coming out. Let's see if it does more damage than Thunder, but it's guaranteed to hit at least. Sylveon is so low! Once again, at one hit point and a dream, but it is moving after Lapras. It takes down the Kingdra, but Eren still has one more Pokemon in the back. Sylveon, of course, does have the ability to use Quick Attack. Uh, we know it has Hyper Voice in Quick Attack. It could have something like Protect, which would be relatively decent to use here. It would heal it up a little bit, but now there's a Primarina out here as well. I don't think Sylveon will be able to take it out. And uh, especially not with a Surf coming out here. This Lapras is going to be super, super bulky. Very smart targeting from Aaron in this game, making sure that that Mimikyu just was not able to be a threat, which was the most important thing here. As we said, all of Aaron's Pokemon, relatively specially bulky, with both Lapras, with both Lapras, uh, Prey Marina, even Politoed, all having deep, very good special defense stats, um, But and that Mimikyu being the biggest threat from Rosemary's team. So we'll see what happens in this next game. Uh, once again, adjustments are gonna have to be made and that Grim Snarl, that light screen, really didn't seem to do too much. That Togekiss pretty much went down uh, in one turn with, from, with in one attack from Lapras, just like the game previously. And that Politoed was put offsetting almost any damage that Togekiss was doing in the first place. And Grim Snarl didn't, wasn't really able to put out too much damage on its own. So out of Rosemary's side, I wouldn't be surprised to see just something like, you know what? Mimikyu is kind of the way that we're going to be able to do this here. Uh, I either have to wait out the La the, Dy the Gigantamax Lapras from Eren's side, or I have to just go all in on the aggro, lead with Togekiss, get the, get the Swords Dance set up, maybe take a little chip damage from a Surf, and then just try to sweep through with the Mimikyu afterwards, potentially bring in Grimmsnarl uh, as, as a second bond with something like Fake Out or Sucker Punch Support, maybe bring in the Light Screen after that. Uh, it's definitely going to be a little bit of a back and forth here with some mind games around that Mimikyu. And, uh, but once again, that Lapras with the Aurora Veil, huge, huge defensive boost to Aaron's team that really he kind of super needs against Rosemary's team. Now, one thing here that we did see was that Rosemary's team was not nearly as, the Pokemon themselves weren't nearly as defensive. Uh, Alchemy not coming out here to use his G-Max attack to heal up the rest of Rosemary's Pokemon. We did see that Sylveon, and Sylveon did put in work. I think it's kind of necessary against that Dragapult. But uh, Alcremi coming in, even with something like a Giga Drain, could still be relatively good here. We saw it was able to take a lot of hits, um, and that might be something Rosemary has to bring in. From Aaron's side, I think you just keep going along the same route. I think Gast leaving Gastron on the bench here is smart. We saw that Rosemary brought these grass type attacks and is super, su and grass Gastron can't really do too much against those with that four times weakness. Focusing on Lapras, making it the center, the centerpiece of the team, using Surf and having that kind of very threatening, very aggressive uh, Kingdra Politoed option that Rosemary has to keep in mind is definitely big. So. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this third and final game. Uh, definitely, definitely a good match so far, and I am excited to see what happens in this game three. So here we see Whimsicott and Alcremi this time. So Rosemary kind of going back a little bit to where she was before, uh, but this time bringing Whimsicott for speed control uh, using something like Tailwind. Uh, like potentially taunt against this Rotom Wash that Aaron has brought out could be huge. And as we said, on Aaron's side, a little bit different this time. Rotom Wash comes out here alongside the Lapras, 
Uh, Rotom Wash, another, this time, another very, very strong threat, uh, which seems to be everything that Aaron has so far. Threats, 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 and a Politoed for some good support. And Aaron, once again, Dynamaxing right off the bat. There are really very, there's very little reason to not Dynamax Lapras right away here and get those screens set up. Uh, just to make sure that there isn't too much damage coming out of something like a max overgrowth from the self Kremi. Now, on Rosemary's side, Whimsicott is almost guaranteed. Uh, and here we see fake tears coming out. This is a very strong move, again, in the face of something like a uh, a very specially bulky team. And this Giga Drain coming out, Rotom goes relatively low. It looks like it is very specially bulky, though. Uh, and, now, and Rosemary is opting not to, uh, to Gigantamax this game. Citrus Berry coming out of the Rotom. Definitely important. Thunderbolt coming out. No setting up here. Whimsicott takes a little bit of damage. If it had a Focus Ash, it's now broken. And G-Max Resonance coming out. Let's see which Pokemon it goes into. I imagine, yeah, here we see going into the Whimsicott. Guaranteed to take the knockout now. And now those screens are set up. That Rotom has lost its berry, but it's relatively healthy. No di no. Dynamax out of Rosemary yet. Yeah, we'll see if she tries to play around it, wait it out. Uh, Lapras is the light clay version. It's not doing a ton, ton, ton of damage. But if those attacks are super effective, like if Rosemary brings in Togekiss here, it's definitely in a dangerous spot. I like this though. Sylveon coming in puts pressure on the Rotom, puts a little bit of pressure on the Lapras. And uh, this Alcremi still has Giga Drain out. Aaron actually considering, briefly considering switching into Kingdra. Uh, definitely something interesting. I wouldn't be surprised though, switching into something like a, uh, switching into Politoed here for a max guy to try to take that Sylveon out just right away with a click of a button. Wouldn't be surprising here. Uh, Alcremi though, I wouldn't, seeing a Gigantamax here from Rosemary, once again, something I wouldn't be too surprised about. That Windscott going down, losing any speed control is a little rough, but that Fake Tears was big. Uh, right now this Rotom Wash's stats are lowered. Uh, Giga Drain not doing too much to the Lapras here. Rosemary opting not to Dynamax. Rotom going for a Hydro Pump and not actually connecting. That's going to be big. Hyper Voice coming out. Takes out the Rotom. A little bit more damage on the Lapras. Any damage here is good. Rain now going to get set up. And this, like, the, the move order here is important. If Lapras had gone before Rotom, Rain would have been set up and that Hydro Pump would have hit almost no matter, like, that Hydro Pump would have hit no matter what. Now, Politoed coming in again. Once again, the rain is already set up. This looks actually pretty similar to what happened in the last game. Aaron is down, a, Aaron and Rosemary both down a Pokemon. Uh, but however, this time Rosemary has not Dynamaxed yet. And Aaron is on his last turn of Dynamax. Uh, Rosemary Gigantamaxing here wouldn't be too surprising, but Helping Hand goes into the Alcremi here. Uh, as we said, it is a threat on its own without even needing to Gigantamax or Dynamax. Politoed using the Surf here. Uh, using its speed that Aaron seems to that Aaron has invested quite a bit in. Uh, Kremi taking a good amount of damage, Sylveon taking some damage. I wouldn't be surprised here if Rosemary has Mimikyu in the back and is saving the saving her Gigantamax for that, or her Dynamax really. Uh, just trying to make this sure this Alcremi wrecks as much havoc as possible at the beginning of the game, which it certainly can. Hydra, uh, Mac Geyser coming out in the rain. Alcremi does survive, but it definitely looks like it's in range of a Surf from this Politoed. Now we know the Sylveon is pretty quick too, but as we said, Politoed is especially bulky. Uh, and, and it looks like, <laughs> one interesting thing to note here is Aaron has opted for Surf even on Lapras. Normally we will see something like Hydro Pump, Hydro Cannon, uh, or well, Hydro Pump or Scald on it. But uh, Aaron just saying, we are clicking Surf. We are taking full advantage of Water Absorb, Storm Drain, all those types of moves. And uh, Politoed using Surf here, as we said, Lapras just staying nice and healthy, relatively bulky, although we saw it is very vulnerable to a wood hammer from a Sword Stance Mimikyu. Surf coming out, Alcremi not going to like taking it, and Alcremi goes down, Sylveon below half health once again. Hyper Voice coming out, going to do a chunk of damage, but not quite KOing either of these Pokemon. Thunder coming out, we did see it doesn't do too much to Sylveon, it's likely Sylveon will be able to survive. But another Surf from Politoed isn't gonna, it's not gonna like taking that, especially boosted in the rain. And here we see Rosemary bringing out that Mimikyu. So a few things could happen here. This Mimikyu really does kind of need to Swords Dance to get this stuff set up. That looks like Aaron, considering making a swap here, this Mimikyu is going to be able to, it's very likely gonna be able to survive this turn no matter what, right? 
It isn't taking a Gigantamax move. It does have the Disguise up. And if it survives, it's probably going to be the fastest thing on the field. And it's going to be able to start using Max Overgrowths left and right. One smart thing, though, as we saw from Aaron in the back, Aaron does have Kingdra. And that Dragon Typing does help it against a Grass-type move. So if Aaron can make a smart switch after Mimikyu has Dynamax, that could put Rosemary in a bit of an awkward position. However, Sylveon can still just click the Hyper Voice button. Uh, water Absorb, tricking on that Lapras again. This Lapras has probably taken well over 100% damage, or at least very close to it, but it is still at full health thanks to all these Surfs. If Sylveon survives, it's going to be big again, and this time Sylveon is not at one hit point. It goes down. Mimikyu's Disguise gets broken. Once again, we're in a position where Rosemary seems to be back against the wall. Sword Stance comes out here. Lapras is going to be attacking into it. The thing is, Rain is going to be going away here pretty soon, but Eren still has Politoed. Thunder comes out into the Mimikyu, of course, and Mimikyu goes down below half health. This time, it's not super, super weak, but that Life Orb recoil is going to be dangerous. Kingdra is going to be very, very fast in the rain once it does get brought, brought out. Uh, and we're going to have to see what Eren does against this Mimikyu. The other important thing to realize, though, is that screens are still up for Rose? Or, or screens are still up for Aaron, and that's going to make it harder for this Mimikyu to kind of sweep through the rest of Aaron's team because it needs to be getting really a knockout every turn here, just at the very least. So it only is so it's only taking one hit per turn because otherwise it's not the bulkiest Pokemon in the world. And uh, Aaron, Lapras and Lapras, Politoed, and Kingdra all doing relatively good amounts of damage. So. Surf here hitting the, oh, hitting the Dynamax Mimikyu and doing so much damage. Politoed likely going down to this max overgrowth here, but this, but Lapras has a very good shot of just taking out this Mimikyu off the bat. If this Mimikyu is able to survive, even at just one hit point, it's going to have to deal with both of Eren's remaining Pokemon and this Life Orb Recoil likely yeah guaranteeing that this lapras can take it down and there we see mimikyu falling after its one turn of dynamax and Aaron takes home the second caster cup battle takes home as if there's a trophy involved who knows maybe there is but that was some very interesting play both players realizing what the other one was trying to do and what they needed to do to win Aaron coming very very well with a very cohesive team a very synergistic team using those surfs to make sure Lapras was super healthy. Uh, like we said, Gastrogon was back there as an option to boost special attacks. Um, but Politoed was really kind of a big threat there. It was doing tons of damage with the surfs and moving very, very quickly. Um, it did go down in all three. It did go down in all three games, but especially in game two and game three, it put so much pressure on Rosemary's Pokemon, breaking Mimikyu's disguise, doing a ton of damage to Sylveon. Uh, almost single-handedly taking down the Alcremi, or at least setting it up for the Lapras. Huge, just a huge MVP, I think, out of Aaron's team there. And uh, as we saw, Rosemary was like, all right, it's Mimikyu or bust. And uh, without, when, without Mimikyu being able to kind of go a turn without taking any damage, it was very, very hard for it to sweep through the team. The Life Orb Coil didn't help too much. The Wood Hammer, obviously a very strong choice from Rosemary's side, but it just wasn't quite able to do enough in those last two games against two against three Pokemon, uh, essentially. Sylveon, also a very key player there. Uh, with Hyper Voice, Quick Attack, being able to kind of pick off a couple of low HP Pokemon on Aaron's side. But once again, the damage output just wasn't quite enough from the front end of Rosemary's Pokemon to really deal with what Aaron had in terms of that huge, huge bulk from Lapras. And um, I think that was I think that was pretty f quickly assessed by both players. Rosemary was kind of able to play around that in that first game. I think she got the big surprise factor there with the Wood Hammer and the Giga Drain on two of her Pokemon. Um, but phenomenal play, as we said, from both of our casters. Great, great match, especially in a mono-type format. We got to see a bevy of moves and uh, things stayed interesting throughout. But uh, I just will say again on this video, these casters are a phenomenal inspiration for me and I'm sure many others uh, that are watching the, uh, the Players' Cup throughout. 
great match from Aaron and Rosemary. Our next video, we will be diving into week three of the regional qualifiers, be a few games to go, and then we will be in the Players' Cup Finals, uh, which brings in uh, Alessio Yuri Bichetto from the Players' Cup Invitational uh, that happened earlier in the summer. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. Farewell.